Hearing Aid, Wikipedia Audio A hearing aid is a device designed to improve hearing by making sound audible to a person with hearing loss. Hearing aids are classified as medical devices in most countries, and regulated by the respective regulations. Small audio amplifiers such as PSAPs or other plain sound reinforcing systems cannot be sold as hearing aids. Early devices, such as ear trumpets or ear horns, were passive amplification cones designed to gather sound energy and direct it into the ear canal. Modern devices are computerized electroacoustic systems that transform environmental sound to make it audible according to audiometrical and cognitive rules. Modern devices also utilize sophisticated digital signal processing to try and improve speech intelligibility and comfort for the user. Such signal processing includes feedback management, wide dynamic range compression, directionality, frequency lowering, and noise reduction. Modern hearing aids require configuration to match the hearing loss, physical features, and lifestyle of the wearer. This process is called fitting and is performed by audiologists. The amount of benefit a hearing aid delivers depends in large part on the quality of its fitting. Almost all hearing aids in use in the U.S. are digital hearing aids. Devices similar to hearing aids include the Osseo Integrated Auditory Prosthesis and Cochlear Implant. Uses Hearing aids are used for a variety of pathologies including sensory neural hearing loss, conductive hearing loss, and single-sided deafness. Hearing aid candidacy is typically determined by an audiologist who will also fit the device based on the nature and degree of the hearing loss being treated. The amount of benefit experienced by the user of the hearing aid is multifactorial, depending on the type, severity, and etiology of the hearing loss, the technology and fitting of the device, and on the motivation, personality, lifestyle, and overall health of the user. Hearing aids are incapable of truly correcting a hearing loss, they are an aid to make sounds more audible. The most common form of hearing loss for which hearing aids are sought is sensory neural, resulting from damage to the hair cells and synapses of the cochlea and auditory nerve. Sensory neural hearing loss reduces the sensitivity to sound, which a hearing aid can partially accommodate by making sound louder. Other decrements in auditory perception caused by sensory neural hearing loss, such as abnormal spectral and temporal processing, and which may negatively affect speech perception, are more difficult to compensate for using digital signal processing and in some cases may be exacerbated by the use of amplification. Conductive hearing losses, which do not involve damage to the cochlea, tend to be better treated by hearing aids, the hearing aid is able to sufficiently amplify sound to account for the attenuation caused by the conductive component. Once the sound is able to reach the cochlea at normal or near normal levels, the cochlea and auditory nerve are able to transmit signals to the brain normally. Acoustically, the sound from the phone's speaker is picked up by the hearing aid's microphone, Electromagnetically, the signal inside the phone's speaker is picked up by the hearing aid's telecoil or T-coil, a special loop of wire inside the hearing aid. Common issues with hearing aid fitting and use are the occlusion effect, loudness recruitment, and understanding speech and noise. Once a common problem, feedback is generally now well controlled through the use of feedback management algorithms. There are several ways of evaluating how well a hearing aid compensates for hearing loss. One approach is audiometry which measures a subject's hearing levels in laboratory conditions. The threshold of audibility for various sounds and intensities is measured in a variety of conditions. 
Although audiometric tests may attempt to mimic real-world conditions, the patient's own everyday experiences may differ. An alternative approach is self-report assessment, where the patient reports their experience with the hearing aid. Hearing aid outcome can be represented by three dimensions. The most reliable method for assessing the correct adjustment of a hearing aid is through real ear measurement. Real ear measurements are an assessment of the characteristics of hearing aid amplification near the eardrum using a silicone probe tube microphone. There are many types of hearing aids, which vary in size, power, and circuitry. Among the different sizes and models are When operating in acoustic mode, the ratings are from M1 to M4, when operating in electromagnetic mode, the ratings are from T1 to T4. Vacuum tube hearing aid, circa 1944. Transistor body worn hearing aid. Ease of use, high wearing comfort, complete invisibility, user friendly interface of software settings, high sampling frequency providing for excellent sound quality. Fast switching between the external headset and phone microphone, acoustic gain is up to 30 dB. Low delay in audio processing body aids consist of a case and an ear mold, attached by a wire. The case contains the electronic amplifier components, controls, and battery, while the ear mold typically contains a miniature loudspeaker. The case is typically about the size of a pack of playing cards and is carried in a pocket or on a belt. Without the size constraints of smaller hearing devices, body-worn aid designs can provide large amplification and long battery life at a lower cost. Body aids are still used in emerging markets because of their relatively low cost. Types Body-worn Behind-the-ear hearing aids are one of two major classes of hearing aids, behind the ear and in the ear. These two classes are distinguished by where the hearing aid is worn. BTE hearing aids consist of a case which hangs behind the pinna. The case is attached to an ear mold or dome tip by a traditional tube, slim tube, or wire. The tube or wire courses from the superior ventral portion of the pinna to the concha, where the ear mold or dome tip inserts into the external auditory canal. The case contains the electronics, controls, battery, and microphone. The loudspeaker, or receiver, may be housed in the case or in the ear mold or dome tip. Is a medical device, is designed for use by doctor's prescription is adjusted using audiometry procedures. Behind the ear In the ear Invisible in-canal hearing aids Extended wear hearing aids Bone anchored BTEs are generally capable of providing more output and may therefore be indicated for more severe degrees of hearing loss. However, BTEs are very versatile and can be used for nearly any kind of hearing loss. BTEs come in a variety of sizes, ranging from a small, mini BTE, to larger, ultra-power devices. Size typically depends on the output level needed, the location of the receiver, and the presence or absence of a telecoil. BTEs are durable, easy to repair and often have controls and battery doors that are easier to manipulate. BTEs are also easily connected to assistive listening devices, such as FM systems and induction loops. BTEs are commonly worn by children who need a durable type of hearing aid. Apps such as Otakon on for certain iOS and Android devices can assist in locating a lost slash misplaced hearing aid. In the ear aids devices fit in the outer ear bowl. Being larger, these are easier to insert and can hold extra features. 
they are sometimes visible when standing face to face with someone. Eye hearing aids are custom made to fit each individual's ear. They can be used in mild to some severe hearing losses. Feedback A squealing slash whistling caused by sound leaking and being amplified again, may be a problem for severe hearing losses. Some modern circuits are able to provide feedback regulation or cancellation to assist with this. Venting may also cause feedback. A vent is a tube primarily placed to offer pressure equalization. However, different vent styles and sizes can be used to influence and prevent feedback. Traditionally, ITs have not been recommended for young children because their fit could not be as easily modified as the ear mold for a BTE, and thus the aid had to be replaced frequently as the child grew. However, there are new ITs made from a silicone type material that mitigates the need for costly replacements. ITE hearing aids can be connected wirelessly to FM systems, for instance with a body-worn FM receiver with induction neck loop which transmits the audio signal from the FM transmitter inductively to the telecoil inside the hearing instrument. Adjustable control the audio circuit is analog with electronic components that can be adjusted. The hearing professional determines the gain and other specifications required for the wearer, and then adjusts the analog components either with small controls on the hearing aid itself or by having a laboratory build the hearing aid to meet those specifications. After the adjustment the resulting audio does not change any further other than overall loudness that the wearer adjusts with a volume control. This type of circuitry is generally the least flexible. The first practical electronic hearing aid with adjustable analog audio circuitry was based on U.S. Patent 2017,358, Hearing Aid Apparatus and Amplifier by Samuel Gordon Taylor, filed in 1932. Programmable control, the audio circuit is analog but with additional electronic control circuitry that can be programmed by an audiologist, often with more than one program. The electronic control circuitry can be fixed during manufacturing or in some cases, the hearing professional can use an external computer temporarily connected to the hearing aid to program the additional control circuitry. The wearer can change the program for different listening environments by pressing buttons either on the device itself or on a remote control or in some cases the additional control circuitry operates automatically. This type of circuitry is generally more flexible than simple adjustable controls. The first hearing aid with analog audio circuitry and automatic digital electronic control circuitry was based on U.S. Patent 4,025,721, Method of and Means for Adaptively Filtering Near Stationary Noise from Speech by D. Graup, G. D. Causey, filed in 1975. This digital electronic control circuitry was used to identify and automatically reduce noise in individual frequency channels of the analog audio circuits and was known as the Zeta noise blocker. Many in-canal or completely in-canal aids are generally not visible unless the viewer looks directly into the wearer's ear. These aids are intended for mild to moderately severe losses. CICS are usually not recommended for people with good low-frequency hearing, as the occlusion effect is much more noticeable. Completely in the canal hearing aids fit tightly deep in the ear. It barely visible. Being small, it will not have a directional microphone, and its small batteries will have a short life, and the batteries and controls may be difficult to manage. Its position in the ear prevents wind noise and makes it easier to use phones without feedback. In the canal hearing aids are placed deep in the ear canal. They are barely visible. Larger versions of these can have directional microphones. Being in the canal, 
they are less likely to cause a plugged feeling. These models are easier to manipulate than the smaller completely in the canal models but still have the drawbacks of being rather small. Digital signal processing helps to reduce noise and distinguish the speech signal from the overall spectrum of sounds which facilitates speech perception, reducing of background noise level increases the user's comfort. Setting flexibility provides selective amplification of certain frequencies, effective acoustic feedback reduction, possibility to use directional microphones, which greatly facilitates the perception of sound in certain environments, e.g., when talking face to face, or listening to the remote lecturer, extended frequency range. Self-learning adaptive adjustment which facilitates usage of the device for a number of users, possibility of connecting devices, in general, the maximum purification of the sound transmitted to user. Eyeglass aids In the ear hearing aids are typically more expensive than behind the ear counterparts of equal functionality, because they are custom fitted to the patient's ear. In fitting, an audiologist takes a physical impression of the ear. The mold is scanned by a specialized CAD system, resulting in a 3D model of the outer ear. During modeling, the venting tube is inserted. The digitally modeled shell is printed using a rapid prototyping technique such as stereolithography. Finally, the aid is assembled and shipped to the audiologist after a quality check. Invisible in canal hearing aids style of hearing aids fits inside the ear canal completely, leaving little to no trace of an installed hearing aid visible. This is because it fits deeper in the canal than other types, so that it is out of view even when looking directly into the ear bowl. A comfortable fit is achieved because the shell of the aid is custom made to the individual ear canal after taking a mold. Invisible hearing aid types use venting and their deep placement in the ear canal to give a more natural experience of hearing. Unlike other hearing aid types, with the IIC aid the majority of the ear is not blocked by a large plastic shell. This means that sound can be collected more naturally by the shape of the ear, and can travel down into the ear canal as it would with unassisted hearing. Depending on their size, some models allow the wearer to use a mobile phone as a remote control to alter memory and volume settings, instead of taking the IIC out to do this. IIC types are most suitable for users up to middle age but are not suitable for more elderly people. Extended wear hearing aids are hearing devices that are non-surgically placed in the ear canal by a hearing professional. The extended wear hearing aid represents the first invisible hearing device. These devices are worn for 1-3 months at a time without removal. They are made of soft material designed to contour to each user and can be used by people with mild to moderately severe hearing loss. Their close proximity to the eardrum results in improved sound directionality and localization, reduced feedback, and improved high frequency gain. While traditional BTE or ITC hearing aids require daily insertion and removal, Extended wear hearing aids are worn continuously and then replaced with a new device. Users can change volume and settings without the aid of a hearing professional. The devices are very useful for active individuals because their design protects against moisture and earwax and can be worn while exercising, showering, etc. Because the device's placement within the ear canal makes them invisible to observers, extended wear hearing aids are popular with those who are self-conscious about the aesthetics of BTE or ITC hearing aid models. As with other hearing devices, compatibility is based on an individual's hearing loss, ear size and shape, medical conditions, and lifestyle.
The disadvantages include regular removal and reinsertion of the device when the battery dies, inability to go underwater, earplugs when showering, and for some discomfort with the fit since it is inserted deeply in the ear canal, the only part of the body where skin rests directly on top of bone. A bone-anchored hearing aid is an auditory prosthetic based on bone conduction which can be surgically implanted. It is an option for patients without external ear canals, when conventional hearing aids with a mold in the ear cannot be used. The Baha uses the skull as a pathway for sound to travel to the inner ear. For people with conductive hearing loss, the Baha bypasses the external auditory canal and middle ear, stimulating the functioning cochlea. For people with unilateral hearing loss, the Baha uses the skull to conduct the sound from the deaf side to the side with the functioning cochlea. Individuals under the age of two typically wear the Baha device on a soft band. This can be worn from the age of one month as babies tend to tolerate this arrangement very well. When the child's skull bone is sufficiently thick, a titanium post can be surgically embedded into the skull with a small abutment exposed outside the skin. The Baja sound processor sits on this abutment and transmits sound vibrations to the external abutment of the titanium implant. The implant vibrates the skull and inner ear, which stimulate the nerve fibers of the inner ear, allowing hearing. The surgical procedure is simple both for the surgeon, involving very few risks for the experienced ear surgeon. For the patient, minimal discomfort and pain is reported. Patients may experience numbness of the area around the implant as small superficial nerves in the skin are sectioned during the procedure. This often disappears after some time. There is no risk of further hearing loss due to the surgery. One important feature of the Baja is that, if a patient for whatever reason does not want to continue with the arrangement, it takes the surgeon less than a minute to remove it. The Baja does not restrict the wearer from any activities such as outdoor life, sporting activities etc. A Baja can be connected to an FM system by attaching a miniaturized FM receiver to it. Stethoscope Two main brands manufacture Bajas today the original inventors Cochlear, and the hearing aid company Otakin. During the late 1950s through 1970s, before in-the-ear aids became common, people who wore both glasses and hearing aids frequently chose a type of hearing aid that was built into the temple pieces of the spectacles. However, the combination of glasses and hearing aids was inflexible, the range of frame styles was limited, and the user had to wear both hearing aids and glasses at once or wear neither. Today, people who use both glasses and hearing aids can use in-the-ear types, or rest a BTE neatly alongside the arm of the glasses. There are still some specialized situations where hearing aids built into the frame of eyeglasses can be useful, such as when a person has hearing loss mainly in one ear, sound from a microphone on the bad side can be sent through the frame to the side with better hearing technology. This can also be achieved by using cross or by cross style hearing aids, which are now wireless in sending sound to the better side. These are generally worn by people with a hearing loss who either prefer a more cosmetic appeal of their hearing aids by being attached to their glasses or where sound cannot be passed in the normal way, via a hearing aids, perhaps due to a blockage in the ear canal pathway or if the client suffers from continual infections in the ear. Spectacle aids come in two forms, bone conduction spectacles and air conduction spectacles. Compatibility with telephones. Wireless. Directional microphones.
Sounds are transmitted via a receiver attached from the arm of the spectacles which are fitted firmly behind the bony portion of the skull at the back of the ear, by means of pressure, applied on the arm of the spectacles. The sound is passed from the receiver on the arm of the spectacles to the inner ear, via the bony portion. The process of transmitting the sound through the bone requires a great amount of power. Bone conduction aids generally have a poorer high pitch response and are therefore best used for conductive hearing losses or where it is impractical to fit standard hearing aids. Unlike the bone conduction spectacles the sound is transmitted via hearing aids which are attached to the arm or arms of the spectacles. When removing your glasses for cleaning, the hearing aids are detached at the same time. Whilst there are genuine instances where spectacle aids are a preferred choice, they may not always be the most practical option. These hearing glasses incorporate a directional microphone capability, four microphones on each side of the frame effectively work as two directional microphones, which are able to discern between sound coming from the front and sound coming from the sides or back of the user. This improves the signal-to-noise ratio by allowing for amplification of the sound coming from the front, the direction in which the user is looking, and active noise control for sounds coming from the sides or behind. Only very recently has the technology required become small enough to be fitted in the frame of the glasses. As a recent addition to the market, this new hearing aid is currently available only in the Netherlands and Belgium. These hearing aids are designed for medical practitioners with hearing loss who use stethoscopes. The hearing aid is built into the speaker of the stethoscope, which amplifies the sound. The first electrical hearing aid used the carbon microphone of the telephone and was introduced in 1896. The vacuum tube made electronic amplification possible, but early versions of amplified hearing aids were too heavy to carry around. Miniaturization of vacuum tubes lead to portable models, and after World War II, wearable models using miniature tubes. The transistor invented in 1948 was well suited to the hearing aid application due to low power and small size. Hearing aids were an early adopter of transistors. The development of integrated circuits allowed further improvement of the capabilities of wearable aids, including implementation of digital signal processing techniques and programmability for the individual user's needs. A hearing aid and a telephone are compatible when they can connect to each other in a way that produces clear, easily understood sound. The term compatibility is applied to all three types of telephones. There are two ways telephones and hearing aids can connect with each other. Note that telecoil coupling has nothing to do with the radio signal in a cellular or cordless phone, the audio signal picked up by the telecoil is the weak electromagnetic field that is generated by the voice coil in the phone's speaker as it pushes the speaker cone back and forth. The electromagnetic mode is usually more effective than the acoustic method. This is mainly because the microphone is often automatically switched off when the hearing aid is operating in telecoil mode, so background noise is not amplified. Since there is an electronic connection to the phone, the sound is clearer and distortion is less likely. But in order for this to work, the phone has to be hearing aid compatible. More technically, the phone's speaker has to have a voice coil that generates a relatively strong electromagnetic field. Speakers with strong voice coils are more expensive and require more energy than the tiny ones used in many modern telephones. Phones with the small low power speakers cannot couple electromagnetically with the telecoil in the hearing aid so the hearing aid must then switch to acoustic mode. Also, 
Many mobile phones emit high levels of electromagnetic noise that creates audible static in the hearing aid when the telecoil is used. A workaround that resolves this issue on many mobile phones is to plug a wired headset into the mobile phone, with the headset placed near the hearing aid the phone can be held far enough away to attenuate the static. Another method is to use a neck loop, and plug the neck loop directly into the standard audio jack of a smartphone. Then, with the hearing aid's telecoil turned on, the sound will travel directly from the phone, through the neck loop and into the hearing aid's telecoils. On March 21, 2007, the Telecommunications Industry Association issued the TIA 1083 standard, which gives manufacturers of cordless telephones the ability to test their products for compatibility with most hearing aids that have a T-coil magnetic coupling mode. With this testing, digital cordless phone manufacturers will be able to inform consumers about which products will work with their hearing aids. The American National Standards Institute has a rating scale for compatibility between hearing aids and phones. The best possible rating is M4-T4 meaning that the phone works well in both modes. Devices rated below M3 are unsatisfactory for people with hearing aids. Computer programs that allow the creation of a hearing aid using a PC, tablet, or smartphone are currently gaining in popularity. Modern mobile devices have all the necessary components to implement this, hardware and a high-performance microprocessor that carries digital sound processing according to a given algorithm. Application configuration is carried out by the user himself in accordance with the individual features of his hearing ability. The computational power of modern mobile devices is sufficient to produce the best sound quality. This, coupled with software application settings provides for high comfort and convenience of use. In comparison with the digital hearing aid, mobile applications have the following advantages. It should be clearly understood that hearing aid application for smartphone slash tablet cannot be considered a complete substitution of a digital hearing aid, since the latter. Functionality of hearing aid applications may involve a hearing test too. However, the results of the test are used only to adjust the device for comfortable working with the application. The procedure of hearing testing in any way cannot claim to replace an audiometry test carried out by a medical specialist, so cannot be a basis for diagnosis. Recent hearing aids include wireless hearing aids. One hearing aid can transmit to the other side so that pressing one aid's program button simultaneously changes the other aid, so that both aids change background settings simultaneously. FM listening systems are now emerging with wireless receivers integrated with the use of hearing aids. A separate wireless microphone can be given to a partner to wear in a restaurant, in the car, during leisure time in the shopping mall, at lectures, or during religious services. The voice is transmitted wirelessly to the hearing aids eliminating the effects of distance and background noise. FM systems have shown to give the best speech understanding in noise of all available technologies. FM systems can also be hooked up to a TV or a stereo. 2.4 GHz Bluetooth connectivity is the most recent innovation in wireless interfacing for hearing instruments to audio sources such as TV streamers or Bluetooth-enabled mobile phones. Current hearing aids generally do not stream directly via Bluetooth but rather do so through a secondary streaming device. This Bluetooth-enabled secondary device then streams wirelessly to the hearing aid but can only do so over a short distance. This technology can be applied to ready-to-wear devices or to custom-made devices that fit directly into the ear. Otakon hearing aids for use with Bluetooth wireless devices 
Phonak Wireless FM System Resound Alara Hearing Aid Resound Alara Unite Wireless Accessories In developed countries FM systems are considered a cornerstone in the treatment of hearing loss in children. More and more adults discover the benefits of wireless FM systems as well, especially since transmitters with different microphone settings and Bluetooth for wireless cell phone communication have become available. Many theaters and lecture halls are now equipped with assistive listening systems that transmit the sound directly from the stage, audience members can borrow suitable receivers and hear the program without background noise. In some theaters and churches FM transmitters are available that work with the personal FM receivers of hearing instruments. Most older hearing aids have only an omnidirectional microphone. An omnidirectional microphone amplifies sounds equally from all directions. In contrast, a directional microphone amplifies sounds from one direction more than sounds from other directions. This means that sounds originating from the direction the system is steered toward are amplified more than sounds coming from other directions. If the desired speech arrives from the direction of steering and the noise is from a different direction, then compared to an omnidirectional microphone, a directional microphone provides a better signal-to-noise ratio. Improving the signal-to-noise ratio improves speech understanding in noise. Directional microphones have been found to be the second best method to improve the signal-to-noise ratio. Many hearing aids now have both an omnidirectional and a directional microphone mode. This is because the wearer may not need or desire the noise-reducing properties of the directional microphone in a given situation. Typically, the omnidirectional microphone mode is used in quiet listening situations whereas the directional microphone is used in noisy listening situations. The microphone mode is typically selected manually by the wearer. Some hearing aids automatically switch the microphone mode. Adaptive directional microphones automatically vary the direction of maximum amplification or rejection. The direction of amplification or rejection is varied by the hearing aid processor. The processor attempts to provide maximum amplification in the direction of the desired speech signal source or rejection in the direction of the interfering signal source. Unless the user manually temporarily switches to a restaurant program, Forward-only mode adaptive directional microphones frequently amplify the speech of other talkers in a cocktail party type environments, such as restaurants or coffee shops. The presence of multiple speech signals makes it difficult for the processor to correctly select the desired speech signal. Another disadvantage is that some noises often contain characteristics similar to speech making it difficult for the hearing aid processor to distinguish the speech from the noise. Despite the disadvantages, adaptive directional microphones can provide improved speech recognition in noise. FM systems have been found to provide a better signal-to-noise ratio even at larger speaker-to-talker distances in simulated testing conditions. Telecoils or T-coils are small devices installed in hearing aids or cochlear implants. An audio induction loop generates an electromagnetic field that can be detected by T-coils, allowing audio sources to be directly connected to a hearing aid. The T-coil is intended to help the wearer filter out background noise. They can be used with telephones, FM systems, and induction loop systems that transmit sound to hearing aids from public address systems and TVs. In the UK and the Nordic countries, hearing loops are widely used in churches, shops, railway stations, and other public places. In the USA, telecoils and hearing loops are gradually becoming more common. Audio induction loops, 
telecoils and hearing loops are gradually becoming more common also in Slovenia. A T-coil consists of a metal core around which ultrafine wire is coiled. T-coils are also called induction coils because when the coil is placed in a magnetic field, an alternating electric current is induced in the wire. The T-coil detects magnetic energy and transduces it to electrical energy. In the United States, the Telecommunications Industry Association STA 1083 standard, specifies how analog handsets can interact with telecoil devices, to ensure the optimal performance. Although T-coils are effectively a wideband receiver, interference is unusual in most hearing loop situations. Interference can manifest as a buzzing sound, which varies in volume depending on the distance the wearer is from the source. Sources are electromagnetic fields, such as CRT computer monitors, older fluorescent lighting, some dimmer switches, many household electrical appliances and airplanes. The states of Florida and Arizona have passed legislation that requires hearing professionals to inform patients about the usefulness of telecoils. In the United States, the Hearing Aid Compatibility Act of 1988 requires that the Federal Communications Commission ensure that all telephones manufactured or imported for use in the United States after August 1989, and all essential telephones, be hearing aid compatible. Essential phones are defined as coin-operated telephones, telephones provided for emergency use, and other telephones frequently needed for use by persons using such hearing aids. These might include workplace telephones, telephones in confined settings, and telephones in hotel and motel rooms. Secure telephones, as well as telephones used with public mobile and private radio services, are exempt from the HAC Act. Secure phones are defined as telephones that are approved by the U.S. government for the transmission of classified or sensitive voice communications. In 2003, the FCC adopted rules to make digital wireless telephones compatible with hearing aids and cochlear implants. Although analog wireless phones do not usually cause interference with hearing aids or cochlear implants, Digital wireless phones often do because of electromagnetic energy emitted by the phone's antenna, backlight, or other components. The FCC has set a timetable for the development and sale of digital wireless telephones that are compatible with hearing aids. This effort promises to increase the number of digital wireless telephones that are hearing aid compatible. Direct audio input allows the hearing aid to be directly connected to an external audio source like a CD player or an assistive listening device. By its very nature, dye is susceptible to far less electromagnetic interference, and yields a better quality audio signal as opposed to using a T-coil with standard headphones. An audio boot is a type of device that may be used to facilitate dye. Every electronic hearing aid has at minimum a microphone, a loudspeaker, a battery, and electronic circuitry. The electronic circuitry varies among devices, even if they are the same style. The circuitry falls into three categories based on the type of audio processing and the type of control circuitry. Hearing aid devices generally do not contain processors strong enough to process complex signal algorithms for sound source localization. Analog audio may have Digital audio, programmable control, both the audio circuit and the additional control circuits are fully digital. The hearing professional programs the hearing aid with an external computer temporarily connected to the device and can adjust all processing characteristics on an individual basis. Fully digital circuitry allows implementation of many additional features not possible with analog circuitry, 
can be used in all styles of hearing aids and is the most flexible, for example, digital hearing aids can be programmed to amplify certain frequencies more than others, and can provide better sound quality than analog hearing aids. Fully digital hearing aids can be programmed with multiple programs that can be invoked by the wearer, or that operate automatically and adaptively. These programs reduce acoustic feedback, reduce background noise, detect and automatically accommodate different listening environments, control additional components such as multiple microphones to improve spatial hearing, transpose frequencies, and implement many other features. Fully digital circuitry also allows control over wireless transmission capability for both the audio and the control circuitry. Control signals in a hearing aid on one ear can be sent wirelessly to the control circuitry in the hearing aid on the opposite ear to ensure that the audio in both ears is either matched directly or that the audio contains intentional differences that mimic the differences in normal binaural hearing to preserve spatial hearing ability. Audio signals can be sent wirelessly to and from external devices through a separate module often a small device worn like a pendant and commonly called a streamer, that allows wireless connection to yet other external devices. This capability allows optimal use of mobile telephones, personal music players, remote microphones, and other devices. With the addition of speech recognition and internet capability in the mobile phone, the wearer has optimal communication ability in many more situations than with hearing aids alone. This growing list includes voice-activated dialing, voice-activated software applications either on the phone or on the internet, receipt of audio signals from databases on the phone or on internet, or audio signals from television sets or from global positioning systems. The first practical wearable, fully digital hearing aid was invented by Maynard Engebretson, Robert E. Morley, Jr., and Gerald R. Papelka. Their work resulted in U.S. Patent 4,548,082, hearing aids, signal supplying apparatus, systems for compensating hearing deficiencies, and methods by A. Maynard Engebretson, Robert E. Morley, Jr., and Gerald R. Papelka, filed in 1984. This patent formed the basis of all subsequent fully digital hearing aids from all manufacturers, including those produced currently. The signal processing is performed by the microprocessor in real time and taking into account the individual preferences of the user. The microprocessor automatically analyzes the nature of the external background noise and adapts the signal processing to the specific conditions. Telecoil Analog hearing aids make louder all the sounds picked up by the microphone. For example, speech and ambient noise will be made louder together. On the other hand, Digital hearing aid technology processes the sound using digital technology. Before transmitting the sound to the speaker, the DHA microprocessor processes the digital signal received by the microphone according to a mathematical algorithm. This allows just making louder the sounds of certain frequency according to the individual user settings and automatically adjusting the work of DHA to various environments. For users with varying degrees of hearing loss it is difficult to perceive the entire frequency range of external sounds. DHA with multi-channel digital processing allows you to compose the output sound by fitting a whole spectrum of the input signal into it. This gives the users with limited hearing abilities the opportunity to perceive the whole range of ambient sounds, despite the personal difficulties of perception of certain frequencies. Moreover, even in this narrow range the DHA microprocessor is able to emphasize the desired sounds, weakening the unwanted loud, high etc. sounds at the same time.
Advantages of digital aids include, according to researchers DHA have a number of significant advantages. These advantages of DHA were confirmed by a number of studies, relating to the comparative analysis of digital hearing aids of second and first generations and analog hearing aids. Personal sound amplification products are classified by the FDA as personal sound amplification devices. These compact electronic devices are designed for people without hearing loss. Unlike hearing aids use of PSAP does not require medical prescription. Such devices are used by hunters, naturalists, ordinary people, etc. PSAP models differ significantly in price and functionality. Some devices simply amplify sound. Others contain directional microphones, equalizers to adjust the audio signal gain and filter noise. Legislation affecting use The first hearing aids were ear trumpets, and were created in the 17th century. Some of the first hearing aids were external hearing aids. External hearing aids directed sounds in front of the ear and blocked all other noises. The apparatus would fit behind or in the ear. The movement toward modern hearing aids began with the creation of the telephone, and the first electric hearing aid, the acophone was created about 1895 by Miller Reese Hutchison. By the late 20th century, digital hearing aids were commercially available. Direct Audio Input The invention of the carbon microphone, transmitters, digital signal processing chip or DSP, and the development of computer technology helped transform the hearing aid to its present form. The history of DHA can be divided into three stages. The first stage the widespread usage of computer simulation for the analysis of systems and algorithms for audio processing. The work was conducted with the help of the big computer of that time. Although they could not claim to be a real hearing aids, they carried out successful studies of the various hardware circuits and algorithms for processing audio signals. The software package Belody developed by Kelly, Lockbaum, and Vysotsky in 1961 allowed to simulate any sound system provided in the form of a block diagram. With its help a special phone for users with hearing impairments was created. In 1967, Harry Levitt used Belody to simulate a hearing aid on a digital computer. Processing Analog Almost ten years later the second step was taken the creation of quasi-digital hearing aid, in which the analog components and digital programmable module was combined into a single compact case. In this device the digital controller not only controlled the analog components, but it could be programmed by connecting an external computer. The concept of quasi-digital device was very successful from a practical point of view because of the low power consumption and compact size. At that time, low power analog amplifier technology was developed very well in contrast to the semiconductor chips necessary for a real digital camera. The combination of high performance analog components and digital signal processing capability has led to the creation module successful production parts. The hearing aid of this type was developed by Edamonic Design. A little later, Mangold and Lane created a programmable multi channel hearing aid. A similar approach was applied by similarly. Graup with CO authors for developing of an adaptive noise filter on a single crystal. This relatively small chip had low power consumption and fit in the case of ordinary BTE or ITC hearing aid. Digital Difference between digital and analog hearing aids Difference between PSAP and digital hearing aids 
History History of Digital Aids Regulation Ireland United States Cost Australia Canada Iceland India United Kingdom United States 2 Batteries The third stage of development was the appearance of real digital hearing aids. In DHA all stages of sound processing are carried out in binary form. To do this, an external sound from a microphone first converted into a binary code, and after the conversion the reverse transformation is carried out. The first real DHA were models developed by Graup in 1970 on the basis of the 8080 microprocessor, which replaced the analog components. The possibilities of a programmable processor made the device self-adjusting, which opened the prospects for the use of advanced signal processing techniques, noise reduction, etc. Although the 8080th processor was relatively slow and big in size. Further development of the DHA is associated with the creation of microprocessors with parallel processing of data arrays. As a result, a significant decrease of calculations time gave the opportunity to conduct processing of audio signal in real time. The small size of microchips allowed creating compact hearing aids not exceeding the dimensions of their analog predecessors on their basis. However, for ITC aids these processors were not yet sufficiently compact. In all other respects, full DHA of that period was very similar to modern models. Like much of the Irish healthcare system, Hearing aid provision is a mixture of public and private. Hearing aids are provided by the state to children, OPS, and to people whose income is at or below that of the state pension. The Irish state hearing aid provision is extremely poor, people often have to wait for two years for an appointment. It is estimated that the total cost to the state, of supplying one hearing aid, exceeds 2,000 euros. Hearing aids are also available privately, and there is grant assistance available for insured workers. Currently for the fiscal year ending 2016, the grant stands at a maximum of 500 euros per year. Irish taxpayers can also claim tax relief, at the standard rate, as hearing aids are recognised as a medical device. Hearing aids in the Republic of Ireland are exempt from VAT. Hearing aid providers in Ireland mostly belong to the Irish Society of Hearing Aid Audiologists. Ordinary hearing aids are Class I regulated medical devices under Federal Food and Drug Administration rules. A 1976 statute explicitly prohibits any state requirement that is different from, or in addition to, any requirement applicable to regulated medical devices which relates to the safety and effectiveness of the device. Inconsistent state regulation is preempted under the federal law. In the late 1970s, the FDA established federal rules governing hearing aid sales and addressed various requests by state authorities for exemptions from federal preemption, granting some and denying others. Several industrialized countries supply free or heavily discounted hearing aids through their publicly funded health care system. The Australian Department of Health and Aging provides eligible Australian citizens and residents with a basic hearing aid free of charge though recipients can pay a top-up charge if they wish to upgrade to a hearing aid with more or better features. Maintenance of these hearing aids and a regular supply of batteries is also provided, on payment of a small annual maintenance fee. In Canada, health care is a responsibility of the provinces. In the province of Ontario, 
the price of hearing aids is partially reimbursed through the assistive devices program of the Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care, up to $500 for each hearing aid. Like eye appointments, audiological appointments are no longer covered through the Provincial Public Health Plan. Audiometric testing can still easily be obtained, often free of charge, in private sector hearing aid clinics and some ear, nose, and throat doctors' offices. Hearing aids may be covered to some extent by private insurance or in some cases through government programs such as Veterans Affairs Canada or Workplace Safety and Insurance Board. Social insurance pays a one-time fee of ISK 30,000 for any kind of hearing aid. However, the rules are complicated and require that both ears have a significant hearing loss in order to qualify for reimbursement. BTE hearing aids range from ISK 60,000 to ISK 300,000. In India hearing aids of all kinds are easily available. Under central and state government health services, the poor can often avail themselves of free hearing devices. However, market prices vary for others and can range from Rs 1000 to Rs 275,000 per year. From 2000 to 2005 the Department of Health worked with action on hearing loss to improve the quality of NHS hearing aids so every NHS audiology department in England was fitting digital hearing aids by March 2005. By 2003 over 175,000 NHS digital hearing aids had been fitted to 125,000 people. Private companies were recruited to enhance the capacity, and two were appointed David Ormerud Hearing Centres, partly owned by Alliance Boots and Ultravox Group, a subsidiary of Amplifone. Within the United Kingdom, the NHS provides digital BTE hearing aids to NHS patients, on long-term loan, free of charge. Other than Bajas, where specifically required, BTEs are usually the only style available. Private purchases may be necessary if a user desires a different style. Batteries are free. In 2014 the Clinical Commissioning Group in North Staffordshire considered proposals to end provision of free hearing aids for adults with mild to moderate age-related hearing loss which currently cost them £1.2 million a year. Action on hearing loss mobilized a campaign against the proposal. Most private healthcare providers in the United States do not provide coverage for hearing aids, so all costs are usually borne by the recipient. The cost for a single hearing aid can vary between $500 and $6,000 or more depending on the level of technology and whether the clinician bundles fitting fees into the cost of the hearing aid. Though if an adult has a hearing loss which substantially limits major life activities, some state-run vocational rehabilitation programs can provide upwards of full financial assistance. Severe and profound hearing loss often falls within the substantially limiting category. Less expensive hearing aids can be found on the internet or mail-order catalogs, but most in the under $200 range tend to amplify the low frequencies of background noise, making it harder to hear the human voice. Military veterans receiving VA medical care are eligible for hearing aids based on medical need. The Veterans Administration pays the full cost of testing and hearing aids to qualified military veterans. Major VA medical facilities provide complete diagnostic and audiology services. The cost of hearing aids is a tax-deductible medical expense for those who itemize medical deductions. Research involving more than 40,000 U.S. households showed a convincing correlation between the degree of hearing loss and the reduction of personal income. 
According to the same research the tendency was not observed in almost 100% of households using DHA. While there are some instances that a hearing aid uses a rechargeable battery or a long-life disposable battery, the majority of modern hearing aids use one of five standard button cell zinc air batteries. Modern hearing aid button cell types are typically referred to by their common number name or the color of their packaging. They are typically loaded into the hearing aid via a rotating battery door, with the flat side as the positive terminal and the rounded side as the negative terminal. These batteries all operate from 1.35 to 1.45 volts. The type of battery a specific hearing aid utilizes depends on the physical size allowable and the desired lifetime of the battery, which is in turn determined by the power draw of the hearing aid device. Typical battery lifetimes run between 1 and 14 days.